Benny and the Jets, Beastie Boys, on a Hibby R3 Pro, which is a new DAP that is not for sale quite yet. But when it is, everyone's gonna buy it. Now, I've got the R3 Pro, uh, the R5, and the R6 Pro. I don't know why the R5 didn't get a Pro treatment, but whatever, we'll get to it. Um, I'll probably do all three of these in a row. Not here, we're only gonna do one player here. And then I will sort of do a overall comparison, even though these are very different price ranges for these three units. But compare and contrast in the last video, which will probably be the R6. So Hibby sends me this, right? Hibby sent me everything. This here, take our stuff, your Zeos, and take the Seed 2s, which will get an IM that'll get a review. And so I'm looking at it, and it's very nice to see a portable player that's the correct size. Because a lot of them are just getting bigger and bigger, and after having the M11, which is pretty big, and then the M15, which is, oh, it's, I just want, look, there's a reason why it's called a portable player. Actually, they're never called portable, now they're called DAP, digital audio player, which doesn't actually define size. The Quolos that I reviewed was a DAP, sort of. Um, so I have to sort of like put myself in the mind frame of that. <sighs> size. Perfect. Palm of your hand. That's literally, there's my palm, and boom, it's the palm of your hand. All the music you could ever want. Well, actually, not all the music. Single SD card slot. I like dual SD card slots. It has an internal memory. I don't even know what it is on this 64, 32. Does it really matter? Serious question in the comments. How many of you who have one of these actually bother to fill up the rest of the space in the internal? I don't. I usually just have the SD card, unless you have to, like, emergency throw away your SD card, and then you keep it, I don't know. So, build. Aluminum frame, glass back, glass front, and I'm gonna keep this red towel, which Zeos will link in the description, because these are my favorite um, microfiber towels. They're just, they're quality. I've had them for years, and I wash them all the time. And, uh, yeah, you're gonna need to. Because glass front, glass back means fingerprints, and I'm trying to be a professional here and my Italianness is coming out. So it's designed to hold like this. Well, it's designed with the labels and the buttons all to be um, plugs out on the top. However, Hibby is smart. Hibby knows you're probably gonna be a person of great preferences and tastes. So they literally let you rotate the screen 180 degrees if you feel like it. Like you could have it do it automatically, or you could just tell it, lock it, Connectors on the bottom. What player was it that had the connectors on the top? And I'm like, fuck, I don't want that. I want the connectors on the bottom. Because this, this makes way more sense. Look, I use heavy aftermarket cables. These are the heart audio cables, the ones that have the interchangeable heads so I can play with all the different connectors. We got two and a half, we got 4.4, we got three and a half. Yee, so I don't have to keep changing wires up for every headphone I'm doing. So those will come into play, but they're heavy. Like, that's a heavy thing, and I don't want that sticking off the top. It's the Dreamcast control. Can I, can I please? Can I, can I, can I back up for a second? And spin around and then grab a Dreamcast controller and tell you why it was the greatest gaming console system of all time. So, here's where the wire usually comes out of a controller. I knew I'd be able to do this one day. And the problem is that the wire is heavy and it leans down, you pull it. So Dreamcast was smart because they did that. Control came out the bottom, look at that. Look, now when it pulls down, it, it lifts it up into you. It's, it's, it's good. Or you could clip it over here if you wanted to be more traditional. Which, who would want to do that? So you want to do this. So it's like, look, I can hold, oh God. Can we all play Dreamcast? Can I review the Dreamcast 2 when that comes out? Please, Sega, send it to me. So, automatically, the fact that I can do that means this player is like four notches above most other portables that are in this price range. We have, Info bar on the top, uh, volume with an actual number. Thank you. Theo finally got around to updating, by the way, the M15 to have an actual number instead of just some sort of fucking guessing game with the knob. Your battery with a number, and you can turn that off or on. There's a lot of customizability with this, which is one of the reasons I like it so much. Um, if you were to just, let's unplug that headphone for a second because it's, it's weighing me down as a person. My entire body feels it. Power. All these buttons are metal, by the way. There's no plastic to be found. It's glass and metal, which for $200 is, <laughs> thank God. We have uh, power, which is a very nice metal button. We have an indicator, 
which you can turn on and off in case you don't want a blue light indicator. Actually, it was green before. I think it goes with the bitrate of the song. I don't believe it's a, it doesn't do a battery indication. It doesn't change with like the battery level. I think it's just an indication of your bitrate. So currently it's blue. We get the um, next track, last track, play, pause, or next track, last track, play, pause. Because when you rotate the units view, the buttons rotate. So here where it's physically labeled for volume, plus and minus, when you rotate it, that becomes plus and that becomes minus. So care has been taken to make sure it's not gonna mess you up. It does say hippie up here and it would have been better if it didn't say anything. This way it doesn't look like anything's upside down when it's upside down, because I like running it upside down. Here's my lock screen. This purple color, chosen by me. So the play screen is here and I'll, I'll skip through a couple. I don't know if I have, I do have album art, Billy Joel. So that's, it's the basic, it's the most basic play screen. Here we go. I love, there's no lyrics. So it's just tell me there's no lyrics. We've got countdown time remaining, uh, time elapsed. Actually, that's track length. It doesn't count down the time remaining. I don't know if I could change that. I mean, it might be one thing it cannot do is give you time remaining. It just tells you where you're at in the track and how long it is. It tells you it's a 16, 44, one flack. It tells you the artist, it tells you the album. I could hit the little heart. Now I have a little purple heart. Um, this menu lets me go to the uh, now list, now playing, add to playlist, equalizer, uh, view album, properties, or delete if I want to delete it. There's no single push button to delete something. So Hibby's definitely falling behind on Fio on that because that's the most important option is just be able to delete your music with one press. I'm being, I'm joking. Please Hibby, don't add that. That was a dumb thing that Fio added. So here's your playing screen. This unit is um, not Android based. It just turns on and it is. It doesn't have to load anything. I like that in a DAP, especially a cheap DAP. Like there was, which, which was the feel that it used like Android, the M9, M6. M6 was also an Android player. It was that little M6, which is hanging out here and I'm not gonna start digging for it now, is smaller than this, probably more in the portable range. But this, this is, this is about, this is about as big as you can get before it gets to like, oh, it's a full size player. This is still a small player. Anything the size of my phone is a full size player. And frankly, I don't want to take that out usually when I'm just using Adapt for what it, there's an intended purpose for Adapt that I like. Leaving your home and just taking your music with you. Now, if you leave your home and you plan to do audio file reviews on a park bench, then maybe you want something that's, you know, R6 territory. That's literally hewn out of copper. We'll get to it. We'll get to the weight of the R6. But this is perfect for just, I just need, this is, this is, this is it. In fact, if I keep this, and I'm really considering not putting this in the yard sale, um, this might end up, see, it'd be a waste to put in with my um, mini rigs. Because it's so small and light, I could, I could just take this anywhere and use it for ever, actual things. So we swipe over, and here's our list of tracks. You got a little tiny out, you, you, you get the list of tracks. It's actually relatively smooth, a little, little choppy, but you know, it's not a powerhouse. It doesn't need to be. The battery needs to last 20 hours. That's the point. And once you start scrolling, I'm in all currently, once you start scrolling, there's a little alphabet that pops up and you can just finger over the alphabet. I love fingering the entire alphabet. L, Lady Madonna, Beatles, Mike Alt. And it's playing currently, even though nothing's plugged in, which is a nice thing, because some, you can unplug it and it will pause. But if you have Bluetooth, you plan to in, and hook it up and everything, that's fine. We uh, scroll between, we could do files, which lets me choose USB storage or SD card. I'm assuming USB storage means if you plugged in a USB storage device, which I didn't even consider that. I do have a one terabyte USB external, like a, a big, like extreme sand desk. That's what I took all the music to RMAF in because I needed it to not destroy itself. Albums, artists, genres, alt rock, what alt rock? Otona rock, dancing in the dark from Otona rock. Now if I hit back. Now always when you pick something, that little, icon that's dancing, you press that to get to the actual now playing. And now we're stuck in that album. So we have only 11 tracks to choose from. Uh, shuffle, repeat, repeat one is what your choices are. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back to all, and I'm just gonna start playing something else. Up here, um, apparently that is your menu, or you just pull over for your menu. So you have multiple choices to get to everything. So we're gonna press that, or you're gonna pull it from the left to the right, and we're gonna get the menu. Before we get to the menu though, I wanna point out, this unit, that is not an Android unit, 
can run Tidal and Quobuz. Uh, I don't know where the Quobuz is, but I know Tidal is literally right here. Oh, I can't, I can't show you the login screen because the Wi-Fi is off. Because I turned the Wi-Fi off, so I wouldn't try to update during this, but I'll turn it on. Um, Bluetooth, on off. Wi-Fi, on off. AirPlay, on off. Hibby Link, which is what lets you connect to other devices running the exact same player and do Wi-Fi transfers is here. So I'm going to turn on Wi-Fi. And it was a bit of a pain getting my password in there because you have to type it sort of funny. I don't remember how I did it, actually. Manually entered. Yeah, it's it's got this going on. It's got the old school, if you knew how to text back in the day. I don't know why it doesn't have just a keyboard. Maybe they think it's too small for A, B, C, D. But it's got the A, B, C, G, H, I, J, K, M, O. So you got to tap, you got to tap your, your, your button like one, two, three, one, two, one, one, one. I haven't had to do that in fucking years. But you know what? I'm, I cancel. I'm not going to do that now. But that was a thing. I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. There probably wasn't an easier way to do it on a device this small. And I actually don't know the size of the screen. I'm gonna assume it's like two and a half, three inches. I have a pretty, pretty good knowledge of what three inches looks like. You know, because three and a half inch floppy disks were a big part of our lives. Um, so there you go. Bluetooth. Now Wi-Fi is on. So now when I go back here and I tell it I want to go to the title tab, enter your login and password. And there it shows you the thing that you can type it in. It's like, hey, I don't use title. I know. Zeos, don't you get paid to just listen to this shit all day? Shouldn't you have everything? Yeah, but I, I don't. I, I gave up title when I checked my PayPal. And it turned out I had spent $330 on title and I used it 12 times in a year. And ah, so now I just pay for Spotify because I use Spotify everywhere. I was like, I could just yell at my uh, Amazon Alexa and she'll throw on Spotify where title is a little bit more specifically. I don't want to have physical music. I just want this screaming service that's lossless. And when I did it, when I had it back, it was it got it was all, all the rap stars bought it. And all the things that were being promoted were like rap, rap albums and rap concerts. And I was like, I'm not really I want anime soundtracks. Where's my waifus with music attached to them? So I just dropped the title and just stuck with my $11 a month uh, Spotify. Which you don't have on here, which is sort of suck. But here we go. Update database, import music via Wi-Fi. MSEB, we'll get back to that because I'm pretty sure it's going to be on all of these and I don't want to cover it three times. So I'll cover it real good here because I want to yell and scream. Um, equalizer, which is, uh, can you, it's, a, it's an equalizer. Turn on the... It's yelling at me because I'm trying to touch it. And it's like, turn on the master switch first. And so there's a master switch. So I think it's just cool that it has a master switch. How many bands is this? One, two, three, four, five, ten. The ten band DQ. And then you come up here. You can pick any of these custom voice, metal, dance, rock, bullshit. It's all bullshit. Don't use equalization. Uh, let's go back. Uh, Ebook. I don't know. See, now here's the thing. I reviewed that koan player a long time ago that had like a drawing app and and it was a fm radio which i actually do kind of like the fact that it had fm radio on it but why would i need an ebook reader on such a small player like how, can you imagine sitting there on like a plane and you're like oh yes this is this is my favorite yeah, there's no files found because i don't do ebook reading on my Mm, I mean, I guess, look, it didn't cost you anything to add that. It wouldn't be $194 if they didn't have the ebook reader, so I'm just going to pass that. It does have a pedometer, though. And apparently, I've taken 12 steps. How? I can never make a pedometer, like, work. It's supposed to know how you're... So that means it's got... The fact that it has a pedometer in it means that it has a motion-sensing thing in it. And this is all they could figure out to do with it. Now I've taken 27 steps. What's my calendar look like? 126 steps that day. Cause you can tell I sit down and listen to music on this and not actually take it out. Those I take out. So we got pedometer. We got the wireless settings we saw, play settings. So now you have here just basic things. Play mode, shuffle, output selection. Cause you could have a powered out, a headphone output or a line out. And it's currently not showing that. DSD mode, oh, it supports DSD in case anyone cares. Please, in the comments below. Somebody start a comment, or maybe I'll do it. Zeus, you dick. 
start a comment that says, I care about DSD. And if you are watching this care about DSD, go down to that and upvote it. And if you don't care about DSD, go down to it, don't upvote it, and just comment on why you don't care. Because I personally don't, I don't see it as like the next evolutionary step of things to come. It's not like, first there was MP3, then there was FLAC, now DSD is take, it's not. DSD is so niche, and there's like seven types of formats, and there's really not that big a selection. I'm a, I'm a 25, I have like a 25,000 song library. And I will, I move from MP3 to FLAC when I realize I can get like 90% of that in better quality. When I can get 90% of what I currently listen to, which is very obscure weeb shit and movie soundtracks and TV show soundtracks and, you know, songs from games. When I can get that, 90% of that, in a higher grade format, maybe, maybe I'll give a shit. Because even though I could get it, there's like a size and a movement limitation. Like, I think CD Red Book is about where I'm happiest. I might have a few albums in 24-bit, 192 flack. Just because I'm like, you know what? I really want to make sure I have the best. But I've never listened to 24192 and gone, you know what? This sucks. I need one bit DSD. No, don't. I just don't have the urge. So if you have the urge, tell me why. You go to the thing, upvote and tell me why. Or go there, don't upvote and tell me why not. Um, DSD gain compensation. Resume play from last. Um, then I could choose either track or position. So I'm going to go position. I don't want one position, I want all positions. Um, gapless playback, I have off. I'm gonna turn that on. Maximum digital volume out. Oh, because you can do a coaxial. They don't have the adapter with it, which the, the only accessories it comes with. And I'm gonna veer off for a second so I can move this thing. It came with screen protectors on, by the way, front and rear with plastic over the screen protectors that are already mounted. And then it comes with glass for the front and plastic for the back screen protectors extra set with the accessories and then this giant unfolding like poster that tells you how to install the app and I'm like Jesus Christ unnecessary and then this really nice USB cable it's probably gonna be janky as shit I'd even bother but it's labeled hippie I like when companies go far enough that they actually have their own branded USB it means they sort of care they're taking their they're putting their foot into every little aspect of it some companies think, ah, I don't know, just give me a USB cable. No, I'll get some random one. This is a Hibby cable. It's gold plated, I think, or at least it's gold colored. It's good. We can move that away. So it's, just, it's, got, it's got okay. It's okay. Um, it does come with this clip on case as well, which is, I don't know. I guess it will keep me from getting my fingerprints all over it. So I'm going to put it on right now. But it's a hard plastic. It's like a. It doesn't feel like it's gonna crack, but it does It does sort of ruin the, like I love the feel of something, like the player is metal. And even though the back is glass, see here's the cover on the glass, they've actually undersized it a bit, and I'm tempted to just yank it off. I mean, if you're super worried about scrap, look at the fingerprint. I need to get some Dawn dishwashing soap and fix this. Because no matter how much I wipe it with that, it just doesn't, it doesn't undo. So if you're just sick and tired of that, you can just slap it in this thing. Now this is, at least it feels like it's not going to get scratched by your keys, although I would personally want it to, I feel like I'd want this case on the screen when I'm in, when it's in my pocket. I wonder if I could put it on backwards. No, I probably can't because the buttons stick out. Whatever. We're moving on. Um, max volume. Crossfade. Yes. Gain. High-low gain, which I'm going to show you the coolest menu in this in a second. Replay gain is on and set by track. You can adjust the balance, digital filter, playthrough folders, which is on, yet even if you pick a thing specifically, it only stays there. Playthrough albums, maybe that'll fix it. System settings, all right. Language. The, the every That's every type of Korean, and there's like three Chineses. Actually, I, one of those Japan, Japan? I should know Japanese. All these look too complicated to be Japanese. French, just Italian. Oh, there you go. Pulaski, Russian. I always want to put it in Russian. I will not do that. You'd have to pay me to, because I'll never get back to it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Music. I have it set to manually update my my US bleh, SD card 
because I don't want it automatically looking every time I turn it on, so I just set it to manual. Brightness is set to 100, which thanks to the new GoPro 8, Hero 8, I could actually use. That's why she's set to 55. I could actually look at my wallpapers now. Usually the brightness has to be on 8, or else it destroys the screen. And now look, look how nice and even the colors and lights are. Technology. Um, backlight time. I have it set to 120 seconds, which you've seen it go off because I talk forever. And you could set that to infinite or all the way down to like, what's the shortest we can go, 10 seconds? You have it shut off in 10 seconds, which I'm not doing that. That would that would be great for battery, but uh, you can always just toggle it on and off with the power. Which, I will say this, rotating at 180 degrees, which we're almost at that option now, um, does sort of mess up the button placement. Because I want it out the bottom, but then my volume is at the, like, here. And the next and last track aren't the worst. But the volume should be here, and it's there. So, you live with it. You live with your choices in this world. UI theme. What did I just do? UI themes. All right, so you can download, install custom themes. I don't have any. I didn't look for any. The R3 Pro probably doesn't have any, although I think it might just be the heavy player that has the themes. So you can switch between them. So I, it's either light or dark, and you hit OK. Then there's the theme color, which is my favorite part of this whole experience, because you get five colors to choose from, blue, red, gold, teal, and purple. And actually purple is the color I chose, because look, you can just, I want it to be hot pink now. And now everything's how well, it's actually a, a muted, like pink, dark purple. But you can change the color to your preference, which is nice. Where were we? Oh my God, there's so many more things. Right, I'm gonna rush through this, because you people are bored. Here, stare at Hestia while I, while I do this. Uh, theme color font size I have set to small. Uh, big is a little too big, and I'm you know I have young good eyes, so leave it on small so you can see more. USB mode you could either have it set to storage, you could have this be an audio device on your computer, or you can practice docking with it. Apparently, I don't know if they're a hippie dock. Like I don't get the dock setting, but I mean obviously there's a reason. USB current limited, so that is asking you if your current is limited. It's not asking if you want to limit the current. So I'm not sure if that's for plugging into like a four amp USB charge, you don't wanna blow it up. Or if you wanna put it on slow charge, you put it on there and limit it. Uh, I don't know. Button operation when screen is locked. Yes, you want that on because you wanna be able to use those buttons. The time setting, blah. Idle timer, five minutes. If it's sitting here not playing, it'll show off in five minutes. That makes sense, right? Sleep timer, if you climb into bed with something like this, or you're running Bluetooth and you just leave it on a table and it's just playing and it's just playing and you have a sleep timer set, it'll just shut off. Remember my father used to set the sleep timer on the TV for like three hours and fall asleep in three minutes. It was terrifying. Um, battery percentage display, there you go. I can now not show the battery percentage or show the battery percentage. I don't know, it's a clutter thing, I guess. Like I prefer the percentage than just seeing like a, like a, a three millimeter wide graph slowly go down pixel by pixel. So, I mean, that's fine. Standby, on off, which I think standby will do, and I'm guessing here, because I didn't have it on for the longest time. I think standby will do 50 days. So that means like the FIO, well, the M11 will do like, I don't know, 1800 days or something stupid, but you should be able to, without turning this unit off, let it just sit in standby for a long time if you have that option enabled. Otherwise, it will shut off. And the on off, I'll cycle on and off like I always do, and it's not that long, so I don't know why you'd need that. Status LED, there's the little blue LED there in case you wanna, in case that blue LED is bothering you, you could just turn that off. That son of a bitch, I hate that. A recording steps. I don't understand what that means, but it's on. I'm sorry, I just, I don't, I don't. Screensaver settings, uh, dynamic cover, album cover, or off, and that's when it's locked and then it turns on, it has that thing. Uh, screen rotation, so here's your choices. Off, 180, or auto. So let's turn it off and we'll actually go back to stock orientation. God, I hate it. Um, restore factory settings, firmware update, and certificate. What does our certificate say? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm glad I checked that out. Back, back, back. It's very nice to navigate it too. Just, just, just fling through it. Flick through everything. Flick the bean. Now, favorites, recents, playlists, recently added. All nice things to have. Uh, I wish, I kind of wish the play screen did something more. 
than this like lyrics or not lyrics. I'm I'm sort of what was the player that I just did? The Paw 6000 had those beautiful VUs actually giving you like information about the song that's currently playing, like in, in beautiful art. Oh, it was great. But you know, I digress. So overall in this player, we, we looked at how it functions. How does it sound now, Zeus? We're like 40 minutes in. Well, how do you want it to sound? Let's hook up. I I obviously brought out a T60 RP set to uh, play with because this is the hardest headphone you might ever take portable because it doesn't leak too much and it's beautiful. So you're going to get all the ladies at Starbucks and be like, oh my God, he's did he order a chai tea latte and then add honey to it? And he's wearing wooden headphones in Starbucks. Oh my God. I actually have done that once. I felt, I felt very baller, but at the same time, dirty on the inside. I don't. I don't do the Starbucks hangout thing. Um, we're gonna plug in. I've tried to use this with the unbalanced connector and it just is not enough power. When you go three and a half millimeter, you just, you can't. However, on balanced, and this is a balanced set, the T60RPs, you can just get a four pole and it plops right up in there. They sell balanced cables, but you are honestly better off buying the heart cable. It's cheaper. Uh, did I ever tell y'all how much I love? Interesting that you can, I just realized that when you hit, when you're in the favorites, when you're in any list and you, your song is playing, you hit that song again, that acts as a pause. That's nice. That's good thinking. Am I stuck on one song? Yeah, I'm stuck on, stuck on one song. So we got to go back and I got to do all, uh, Lady Marmalade because I'm a big old girl. My volume currently at 100% balanced. It is playing to my satisfaction, but you have to know that that is as loud as that will play that headphone. 100% high gain. Oh, I didn't even get to the um, the quick switch screen. Forget about all the other shit. All right, jump to this point. Someone put a timestamp. Boom. That. That lives at the bottom of it, like an Android phone or an iPhone where you pull down from the top and you get your menu. This pulls up from the bottom and is so much better than all of those. Um, you get to control screen brightness. You get to control your volume, which by the way, if you do initiate the volume on the side, you can then control it from the center with a little bit more control. But if you let that go away, if you pull up from the bottom, you literally can adjust the volume right here. You don't ever have to touch the volume buttons in this unit. They could just be covered and you could just be like, hmm, this is too loud. Pull up, lower it, drop down. So brightness, volume, and I'm gonna leave it near the top. I don't know why this is here, but you get a little little baby control player the size of my thumbnail that you can next track, last track, play pause from it. So, and it gives you the track title too in this menu. Like I don't get it. But I, okay. Um, Bluetooth on, Wi-Fi on, high, low gain is right there. This is your replay gain setting by track or album or none. So unfortunately it doesn't have any other settings besides track, album, or none. I like, have a lot of my stuff really tuned. No, up from the bottom. Then you have AirPlay. I don't know what that is. It's like an integrated circuit doing a thing like that in a circle. I feel like I should know what that is, but I'm gonna turn that off. Um, then you have, if you wanna use this as a digital output, you switch that on, and there's your sleep timer, like we were talking about, oh, I'm gonna go to bed. So, super easy access. Just fling it up, do with whatever you gotta do, and close it. And it, it, I wish it was labeled, or if I held over it, it would tell me what it is, because I have no idea what that is. I don't recognize, usually I could tell these things by symbols, and I don't recognize that one, that round one with the interconnecting three integrated circuits. I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't make an audible difference. I don't notice anything different on the player. It might just be another, you know, might be something else besides AirPlay. Hold on, let me go to the um, wireless settings. Is that DLNA? It might be DLNA, I don't know. Actually, wait, DLNA is off. DLNA is on, boom! I'm a fucking detective. I figured that shit out, I put the clues together. So yeah, if you want DLNA on, that's what it is. So Heavy Link, Heavy Link is not accessible through that, which is sort of odd. 
because it is their proprietary thing. So now I think we've explored everything except MSEB. So, let's talk about headphones for a second because I'm Zeos and I can do that. Let's put this on. Uh, let me lower the volume because those are way more efficient. These, by the way, are the Acoustic Research uh, H1s you cannot buy. So, sorry. I just think they need more love now they live on my wall. Um, MSEB. Real quick. You know how that works out when Zeo says it. MSEB is the most silly thing that I've ever seen in a portable player. I'm going to give it some praise. I'm going to praise it a bit. But at the same time, you only need MSEB if you fucking hate your headphones. God, Dad, you bought me shitty headphones. You're lucky I got MSEB so that I could fucking twist every aspect of a headphone and until it looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. Like, this is... This is not an equalizer. This is a DSP... And I don't want to say the word correction, because there's absolutely nothing correcting about this. This is, a, this is a DSP fetish control panel. Again, I wouldn't have to cover this in the other players, which will make it nice and short. I'll refer everyone to this timestamp in this video. So let me just give you the titles of things that you could adjust. Overall temperature. That's the first one. And you can go cool and bright or warm and dark. Now I have this on, I'm going to play, and I'm going to just swing it all the way to cool and bright. And it's got beautiful like green or orange indicators. And if you go to the extremes, extreme warm and dark sounds like someone put a pillow over my head. And if you go cool and bright, it sounds like someone punched the woofers on a, like took my speakers there. Punch the drivers so that there's no more mid-range or anything. And now the tweet is just blaring at me. Now you can go anywhere in between that. But that's, so that's, okay, okay, I get it. Put back that to zero. Base extension. Deep or light? Deep, light. Well, deep, obviously. And it takes a second for it to, like, calculate and then deal. The overall volume drops on this, by the way, because it puts so much low end in there, it doesn't want to distort. By the way, the fact that I'm doing this to Lady Marmalade should be like the greatest thing that's ever happened on the internet. So now, base extension light is just turn off all things low end. Just turn them off. I'm going to reset it. I'm just going to do that a bunch of times. Now we've got base texture. Thumpy or fast? Thumpy or fast? Thumpy all the way. Pillow again. Thinner pillow, but still a pillow. Fast. Eh, no treble. Only, only treble and no bass. So it's like, okay, I, I get it, but I did that already. Now we have... I gotta pause this so I could... Note thickness. I've always wanted to adjust my note thickness. By the way, if you're interested in this, what's going on right here, my phone here is currently running it, and MSEB is on the, the app. The, the, the app on the Play Store has all this. In fact, why don't we look at it there? Because it would be so much easier. Why is every screen I own just disgusting? So we got cool, bright, cool, bright, light, fast, crisp, recessed, crisp, detoxed, soft, soft, slow and musical, soft, or warm, dark, deep, thumpy, thick, Forward, radio edit, intoxicating, crisp, crisp, hard and fast, crisp. And, uh, like, like this, this everything. Yeah, okay, I could. You have to really, really, really just want to fuck with what you're listening to. No, I love these headphones. I'm not a fan of equalization. Here, look. I, People ask me this all the time. Hey, Zio, should we EQ your headphones? No. You see that wall? That wall means I never need to EQ anything. If I don't like the way something sounds in particular, I could move to something else. Now, not everyone can afford that wall, but most people can afford two or three cheap headphones. I'm talking sub $100. You want your bassy headphones, you want your light, airy, open headphones, and you want your comfortable, portable headphones. 
that would be a great start. I have, um, I want my headphones that sound a little bit like Japanese people banged on a tree to get goo out of it to then paint my headphones, headphones. I have those headphones. So I'm a little bit beyond help. But this, I'm almost tempted to say, if I sat down here with a piece of shit set of headphones, one that I really don't like the sound of, I could go through and adjust the overall temperature, bass extension, bass texture, note thickness, voice, female overtones, sibilance, sibilance, I'm sorry, sibilance low frequency, sibilance high frequency, impulse response, and air. I could add some crispy air. I could crispy the air. And then I could have my female overtones be detoxed or intoxicating. So I, let, let's do that here. Ready? Because we're listening to a, a, a song sung mostly by women. Uh, oh, wait, it's different here. It's intoxicating on that. It's vivid on this. So instead of detoxed and vivid, it's detoxed and intoxicating, which makes more sense. But then everything's still crisp, hard, fast, crisp, hard, fast, thick. Thick, thick, thick. We still have thick. I played with this for about 20 minutes. Just, I basically tried every slider, and then I went through and I just randomized the slider, and it sounded like shit. Now that's not how you were supposed to do it, but I would highly recommend only playing with that if you absolutely have an issue with what you're listening to. And you shouldn't. If you're buying a $200 player, and you've got headphones you don't like, your priorities are wrong. Get headphones you like. Go to hifiguides.com. Promo in the description. Well, actually, it's always been there. Just go there and just... If you, if, do, I have, do I have to do everything? Hold on. Hold on. I can't spell the name of my own fucking site. There it is. HiFiGuides.com. You go here and it looks like this. And you're like, what do you want? I want a headphone. What's your budget? Well, it's not $2,000. I want to spend $95. There's all your options. But now it'll answer your questions. Do you have an amp? Yes or no? If you don't have an amp, it's fine. If we have an amp, it just means harder to drive headphones shop stuff up. Skip it. You don't need to answer that question. Skip. I want um open back. And then you could either skip or put it if you want V-shape, neutral, bright, warm. If you don't know what you like, you just ignore that. Here are your results. Look how many fuck oh actually wait, we're going past it. These six are your results. Double out sevens. What are the double out sixes? Oh, I went for open back. All right. Double out sevens, course Porter Pros, KSC 75s, KPH 30Is, Ship 9500s, SR 60Es, or out of your price range, it lists the other ones. Go find yourself a headphone that works. There's no reason to spend $200, because remember, we just spent $95 for this. There's no reason to spend $200. Actually, I went to 196 Go to like 25 201 Get HE 400Is or X2HRs or... Even the M560s, I used to have them up there. I should put them back. They're so good. There's just, there's options. Don't, 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 don't. I don't know why that exists. The fix your headphone thing is like violent. It, it, here's the thing. It's not like gentle. Like when I talked about the SU8 DAC, the SMSL SU8, that had like crystal one, crystal two, crystal three, tube one, tube two. And that just twisted the sound in the most delicate way that you could almost not even tell it was doing anything. But it was doing something. And oh my god, I enjoyed that little bit of DAC play. This is just a hammer on any, every direction, up, down, left, right. I'm not saying, again, you're not paying extra for it. I just, overall, I'm reviewing this ability and I don't, I don't want it. See, there's your lock screen. It says Lady Marmalade and you just swipe out of it. I have two Lady Marmalades? I have landscape from Amanchu. I still haven't talked about how this sounds. I've talked about how it powers things. It's got plenty of power. On balanced out, it'll power pretty much everything. Once this hit a reasonable volume at near 100, or at 100, I know that under T50s, which is most fucking headphones exist, it's gonna be fine. It's going to be fine. It's like 210 milliwatts in balanced output. And that'll give you 16 hours of playback time. It's clean. Is it BTR5? Great, though. Because that's like my benchmark. That little fucking Bluetooth thing. While I'm running files physically off of this, 
Whereas when I review the BTR5, I was sort of like streaming Bluetooth. And even though streaming Bluetooth is as clean as you mostly need to get, this is going to... You just want that pure flack. Pure. Pure, unadulterated flack. Volume adjust. See, I'm running these headphones currently. High gain. Actually, you know what? I should probably put these to low gain. How do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? Do I have to wait? I hate waiting. I'll put it in low gain. I'm going to raise the volume here. Yeah, I could run these headphones low gain. What am I at? 76? Yeah. And this is a quiet ass song. So 80 out of 100. Planars, low gain, but balanced. It's this. It's quality stuff. I want I want nothing more from a portable player for two hundred dollars. Oh, it's about to have a good part of the song. Come on. Shh, it's happening. Isn't it weird that I have stereo now? Well, actually, you probably only left channel because there's a front facing mic and a left facing mic on these. I don't know how to make it do stereo, stereo. <sighs> overall, Zeos, what the fuck do you think? Well, you're gonna get my overall opinion of all three of these in the last video, which would be the Hibby R6, which may not be out yet, but patrons have it. So I'm I'm done. Like there's nothing else. I've, I've actually don't even have to talk about most of the stuff in those other than their sound quality. Because as you can tell, you can go download the app. It, it's It's your app, it's the same app. It's got all the same things this does, except this has a user login. I don't have any tracks on this phone. This is my backup phone. Everyone needs a backup phone in case they drop theirs in a toilet. Even if it's a waterproof Apple phone, you might break it. People are always like, my phone's waterproof. Well, fuck you. Run it over. Is it run over proof? Um, yes. When this goes on sale, everyone's going to buy it. There is no... Fio player. Here's the, all right, this is the actual only part of the thing you need to listen to. There is no Fio player that I would take over this even near the price range. M6 is M6, M9. M9 is like $400 sitting right there, the M9. M6 is, is the cheaper one. It's like $130. And it's like, all right, it's a cute little thing. It's a little bar of soap. And it's, it's great for like just Bluetooth out and have a thing play. This feels like the best budget player currently available. I love its features. I love that I could just do this and this and screen rotation and boom. And now my wire comes out the bottom, even if it does screw up which side my play pause and everything are on. I love that. It's fast. Oh, I forgot to do the on off test here. I have to hold it down for quite a while to get it to turn off. And then it says, hippie music, make music magical again. Then I rub it. I'm so glad I got a new camera that can see everything so much clearer so that my fingerprints are now horrifying. All right, so here we go. We're gonna turn it on and press. Let go. Make music more musical. It actually is slightly slower than I remember, but there, it's Ron, we're good OT, we're playing. So, I mean, that's what, if you're going to be a person who's constantly from work to your car, to a bus stop, to the back to the office, to a diner where you don't want to listen to people, then you put that standby mode on, so it just standbys the phone, the uh, player. But if you're like me, and you're going to pull this out every three or four days, that's not a bad wait. So that's my advice. Now, we should probably talk about all the other bullshit that I always talk about. I was I was actually just mentioning Patreon. Um, patrons get to see these reviews early. So there's these can't buy this yet. I was gonna wait till you could buy it, because I like to be that like initial rush. Everyone's like, oh god, Zeo's muted, it's the greatest. But I mean, I don't know when it's coming out. I've had this thing for like two months and it's still pre-order. And only on their site. So Amazon's got the fives and the sixes, but they don't have this. So I mean that means you gotta be waiting regardless. So might as well just release the video. So people on Patreon get to see these reviews early for five dollars. You get early release videos and ask me any question you want on platform and the yard sale. Yard sales from first to the tenth. This video, this channel always has on around the first, there's a video that describes what's in the yard sale. You you sign it for Patreon unless you're a patron already or a subscribe star subscriber already. 
there's a, a thing, you read the rules, you hit the button, you make a bid on whatever items you want, and at the end of 10 days, I will email you and be like, hey, you won. Here's your invoice. Continental United States, I ship to you for free. International, I take half the shipping. I will ask you for half the shipping. Uh, that's the $5 tier. In both platforms, it works for both. Did I do subscribe store? I did do the subscribe store. Why is there hair in there? Hold on, I'm, I'm being OCDZS now. The $10 Patreon tier is a group of people um, that are insane, more insane about audio than I am, and they exist only on the $10 Telegram and above. So if you ever wanted to have 200 friends that are obsessed with Zeos or use me as a common springboard to meet new people, there you go. There have literally been meets formed in the UK and other places because they all hang out on my thing. A bunch of them came to Cam Jam. Well, if they could, and they were like, hey, let's all hang out at Cam Jam. So it was great. It's great. So the $10 behind the scenes tier gets to know everything about my thoughts before they happen. Way before I even record these videos. Like, if I had these for two months, they ask me, what do you think about the heavy player? And all the things I'm saying to you, I say in much shorter, condensed voice messages to them. Because voice messaging, because Telegram is great. I want to get the whole world on Telegram. I'm this, what, what's, I've never even seen WhatsApp. Never mind used it. I don't care how many billions of people have it. Telegram is the shit. Um, so that's $10 tier. And the 15 and higher tiers, those will have to do something very, very soon in the future where I ship out items that are sitting in my house for people to try. Like literally I have a closet full of headphones that I'm not using currently. Aeolus are in there. My other set of Aeolus, the ones that Zach gave me like two years ago that aren't as pretty as those, are in a closet. So things like that, maybe if I keep the M15, I throw that in a box, so I insure it, you pass it to you, you pass it to someone else. That's coming up, I will announce it. Don't join those tiers yet. I mean, you can, just don't expect that tier to happen in like the next three minutes from the time you watch this. That's it. Hi-Fi Guides, I showed you. Hi-Fi Guides has a forum. In case you people are, are like really, really like, if the YouTube comments are not enough, we have a very bumping forum. Look, gaming audio, off topic. Daps, let's go to the daps section. Cause here's the thing, I birthed this. DMS and I birthed it. We got it sort of rolling. We put a bunch of mods on, a bunch of admins. And now the community has just exploded. So I can't even keep up. I can't even keep up. And I love how it shows the avatars and how many replies and views and activities. And it's very neat and clean and it works well on a phone. Actually, I think we have an app. I think we have an app on, on, on Android. I think there's an app because we're using the, what form software we're using? Discourse. And that like gives you an app. It's weird. About the DAPS category. Oh, I wrote this post. Replace this first paragraph with a brief description of your new category. Oh God, it's the default. Again, it's a new form. And we'll get to fixing all the little issues, but um, there's other people here who have done things. M11 versus M11 Pro. If you ever wanted to read uh, how many posts? 37 posts about that. Here you go. So finally promoting the forms properly, at least. I'm not signed in, which is another thing. So that's great. So I'm gonna log in now and I'll deal with that. And download the wallpaper, by the way. Hestia, I have never seen, is it okay to pick up girls in a dungeon or whatever the hell the Hestia anime is? But I've seen so many pictures of her in various positions that I understand pretty much the entire plot. So download that wallpaper in the description. All wallpaper, by the way, downloads are available to patrons and subscribe star. You just go there and under under any tier and you could access like over a thousand wallpapers. Well, I think it's exactly a thousand wallpapers. And uh, you could look up the original artist with Sauce Now or IQDB, and then you can go and give them money on Patreon or Pixiv or whatever you're going to find them on. Anyway, I'm done here. I'll link to everything. And I'm sorry this was like a 50-minute review. I'm feeling like it was a 50-minute review. These things usually run long. But luckily, that means the five and the six review will be shorter. And I will probably reference this review in those because I'm not going to have to cover all this shit again. That's going to be mostly build and sound quality changes over this. This is the line, and we're going to go past the line. So anyway, how's the camera working out? You like it? You don't like it? I can switch back to the four and have... No contrasts and weird things, but uh, I like this so far. I like it a lot.